Welcome to another GIMP tutorial. In this video, we'll quickly look at color and picking color, choosing a certain color that we want to use in GIMP. We'll look at the different options we have for the color interface and different ways to pick a color, uh, and then we will be using color. If you don't already have a blank document, you can just get one by going to File, New, and then just leave everything at default and hit OK, and it brings up a nice blank square like this. So we have a nice square white canvas. One thing I will say is that we do not have an alpha channel. If we go over here to the top right, we can look and see we have a red, green, and a blue channel. And if, our, and if we click on our layers, we see we just have one layer. Don't You don't need to worry about any of this if it doesn't make any sense to you, but just know that we do not have transparency, which is why if we go to our eraser and try and erase this white, we can't get to a transparent background like we could if we had a, a, a alpha channel. So for alpha channel, if I right click and go add alpha channel, now we could erase and these sort of squares back here is transparency or like the alpha channel. Don't worry about that at all. I'm gonna remove it right now because uh, we'll touch on that later in the future. But just know that's why we're not gonna see options when we left click on our, our color to choose. We can choose a color, but we're not gonna see options for the alpha channel or for transparency in here, um, just yet anyway. Okay, so um, let's slow down a little bit and go over here. To choose our color, we've learned before, if we start drawing, if we go back to, to select a black color, we can just draw with our brush or the pencil or lots of these different tools, and we can draw in black. To change the color, we just left click on one of these two squares, either the white or the black. The one that's on top is the one we're using right now, which is the black. And we can select any shade of red in here. We can go in the top right hand corner is pure red. We can hit OK. And now everything we draw will be in red. We can come again and left click. And we can go over and if we left click and hold, we kind of get these crosshairs. And we can see it's moving the dials around over here a little bit. Um, this might be different for you. It might be this LCH. I have it selected on this uh, HSV and it's just changing different ways. It's got a red, green, and a blue channel. We can also change the color over here, but I would recommend staying away from this um, when you're just starting out and only change your color over here on the left side portion. So to ch change the actual color, we can select with left clicking. We can go to our blues. We can go to more like yellows or reds. We can left click and hold and see how that changes. And when we get the, the color or the hue that we want, we can then select mixing white with that or more blue and under current it shows the color that we're currently on. So we did have this red color, shows the old, and now we're going to be more of a blue. And if we want to be more of a blue mixed with white, we come up here and this is kind of a halfway between blue and white, we hit OK. And we have sort of this blue white color now. Another tool we haven't really looked at is the bucket fill tool. So maybe if I choose a different color like this green and we get a really pale green color, hit OK. We can go to the uh, bucket fill tool or the, what's it called, fill tool? Yeah, bucket fill tool. We left click on it and now we can click and it'll fill in everything within that area will be that color. So maybe we want these eyes to be a purple color with some black mixed in, like a black purpley. We can select that color and go to OK and we can fill in these eyes now. So it fills in the whole area. So now we've drawn a little face right here. Um, there's a toggle too if we want. So if we grab the eraser tool right now and we start to erase, it's gonna erase this back, this color here. So not the purple, it'll erase this color that's behind which is a white square right now. So if we erase, everything is erasing in white but it doesn't have to be that way. We can change the erase color by clicking on that one and change it to a different color as well. Maybe we change it to a shade of red and hit okay. So now when we erase, it'll be this shade of darker, you know, maroon red color. And we can toggle between the two. If we click this button, now the foreground color is this sort of maroon and the background color or the color of our erase tool will be this purple, this darker purple now. Um, when we have our drawing tool selected like the brush, we can do that too. We can draw, let's change the color of this to more of a, oh, no, no, something contrasting, more of a green. So now we have a green right here, and if we want to just toggle between the two, we can left click, and now we have the purple. So play with that, toggling between the two. It's also X is the shortcut key. If you hover over, it tells you, press X, and you can toggle. See, so we can draw a line, press X, and keep toggling between those two by pressing X on our keyboard. 
I should turn on my keyboard shortcuts real quick. So X will toggle that. Um, okay, let's go back into the colors now because I want to show you some different options we have. So we've just looked at this one right here. If we hover over, this is what's called the, the GIMP color selector. If we right click, we see what they all are. We have GIMP, CMYK, we have watercolor, we have wheel, and we have palette. Um, and that's right clicking to get to those options. Or we can click these tiny little icons. Once you get familiar with them, you can just click on them. So CMYK is uh, cyan, magenta, yellow, and K is the black color. So you can choose your color this way. You can choose, this is done in printing a lot. You can choose by mixing these different colors and you create a color. So we've created this sort of orange color. And again, as we move these, it's changing the dials over here under the red, green, blue, and the hue, saturation, and value is what this HSV stands for. Uh, so we can choose our color this way and we can hit OK. And now we've got a nice color for printing that a printer can interpret. It knows how to make this ugly brownish color. And if we add more cyan, which is like a bluish color, and take out the magenta, which is more like a red, and take out the yellow, we're going to get just cyan. So this is just a cyan color now. Uh, okay, let's go back and see what else we have. We have this watercolor. And watercolor is one... Um, I'm actually not quite sure how, if it's working correctly in this version, but it's one that I don't use. But anyway, you can select colors in watercolor, but one that I do use a lot is this color wheel, this next one. The color wheel lets you choose between white in one corner, black in the other corner, and then full color saturation in that other corner. And you can mix between any of those colors to create a nice um, color. And then if you want to change the hue of the color, you come around and you can left click in this circle to find a nice hue and then a mix between either white and black or uh, white and that color or black and that color. So this is a good, a good way to pick colors as well. You can pick the same colors in this in all different methods. You can pick the same colors. It's just a different interface for how you want to pick. The last uh, thing we have here is our palette. So this is the colors that we've used in the past. If you want to quickly jump back to that ugly brown color, we can do that or this um, kind of this magenta color we had picked uh, earlier, or some of these lighter green. So it keeps a history of the palette you're using, so you can jump back and forth between certain colors. One last thing I want to talk about is if we do change over here, if we want to change the value of the red, green, and blue, you can toggle between 0 and 100, showing that, or 0 and 255. A lot of times, if you're working with color, especially in like HTML or different in uh, like websites and things, you might want to have a value between 0 and 255. So in that case, when you do maximum red, it's 255 and minimum is 0. But some people don't work in web or maybe especially if you're working in uh, like CMYK and like color, you maybe want it to, to be between 0 and 100. It's just personal preference. But then that way, when you turn up red to, to the full amount, it's 100%. And so you know 50 is 50%. It kind of helps you understand that if you have 25% of a certain color or not. Uh, anyway, that's kind of the different toggles we have there. One last thing I'll show you is we can select this here, which is the eyedropper tool. So we can pick a certain color from our image, like this black. And then we can choose that color, or we can pick this purple color that we had before. This is especially useful if you have an actual image brought in that you're working on, like a photograph. You can pick a certain uh, pixel color from that image and know exactly what that color is and be able to use it as well. So hopefully that's made a little bit of sense. Um, go ahead and play with this, the color, uh, different color options we have here. I will say there's also a color picker tool as well right here. If we hover over, we can pick a color uh, this way as well and just start using that color. So now we have this red, we can click on the color picker and we can pick this uh, blue color and then we can draw in that as well. So that's another way to pick colors from the image you're working with. Well, I'm going to leave this video here. Go ahead and leave questions and comments below if you have any and I'll catch you in the next video.